In this example, we look at the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If births were uniformly distributed across a week, we would expect about one-seventh of all births to occur during each day of the week. How closely do the observed number of births fit this expected distribution? The chi-square goodness of fit test is used to determine whether an observed frequency distribution is significantly different from the expected distribution or how good the two distributions fit each other. The table on our right shows data for the days of the week and actual observed data about numbers of births in New Jersey. If we were only interested in one day of the week, we could conduct a one proportion Z test. However, because we have seven hypothesized proportions, we need to conduct a test that considers all of them together and gives an overall indication of whether the observed distribution differs from the expected one. The chi-square goodness of fit test is just what we need. Let's consider the frequency distribution of all 2003 New Jersey births by day of the week. So that's the data we have up here on the table. We are going to open StatCrunch and create a variable for the number of births in New Jersey for 2003. This is the observed data. We also need to create a variable for the expected frequency. To do so, we compute the expected frequency for each day of the week. Since we are hypothesizing that births are uniformly distributed, we calculate the expected frequency as E equals N divided by K, where N is the total number of trials, in this case, births, and k is the number of different categories, in this case, the days of the week. For this example, our expected value is going to be that total, 116,823, divided by 7, or 16,689. So we will use this expected frequency for each day of the week. So here's a note. If we had been hypothesizing unequal frequencies, we would compute a separate expected frequency for each one of those categories. And we'll see that in the next example. And we are going to outsource those calculations to StatCrunch, of course. So we're going to head over to StatCrunch and select Stat Goodness of Fit Chi-Square Test. Over here in StatCrunch, I have entered my data already. So for the observed 2003 New Jersey births, I have a column here. And then the expected frequencies, the total divided by seven days, I have a column also. So we are going to go to Stat goodness of fit, and choose a chi-square test. So we're asked to pick the column that has the observed data. That's the actual 2003 New Jersey births. So we'll choose that column, and then the expected column. We could also, in StatCrunch, click all cells in equal proportion, and StatCrunch will take that total from the 2003 births and divide by 7, just like we did. I'm going to go ahead and select the column where we already did that by hand, called the expected frequency. And then by default, the display is going to give me the expected values. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Compute. So our results are telling us the total sample size, which matches what we saw in the data. The degrees of freedom, DF, are 6 because 7 days of the week, 7 different categories or values for chi-square, take away 1, is 6. The chi-square statistic, which was calculated taking the observed minus the expected value, for each day of the week, squaring that difference, then dividing by the expected frequency, and then adding that up for all seven days of the week is 3,679.8667. And then the p-value is very small. So when the p-value is very small, StatCrunch tells us the p-value is less than 0.0001. Uh, sometimes on a calculator, you might get something in scientific notation very small. So I like how StatCrunch just tells us less than 0.0001 when it's very small. And then here's our observed and expected values. So we are going to head back to our notes and see how to interpret this conclusion. So here's some uh, notes about how StatCrunch returns the output. Since the data had seven days of the week, seven minus one is six degrees of freedom. So it's the DF in the output from StatCrunch. And then our chi-square value is pretty substantial, 3,679. So we obtained a very large chi-square value. So you shouldn't be surprised that there is a very small p-value associated with it. If you think back to the chi-square curve, we're going to be pretty far out with a large chi-square value like that. So small, in fact, that some calculators round that small p-value to zero. Don't be alarmed when this happens. Just indicate that the p-value is near zero. 
The p-value won't be exactly zero, but we are unable to find out just how low it is for extremely large chi-square values. So what does all this mean? If bursts were in fact uniformly distributed across the seven days of the week, an observed chi-square value of 3,679.867 would occur really rarely, about 0% of the time. So this result is definitely unusual, so we reject the null hypothesis, H0, and conclude that the sample data are consistent with bursts being non-uniformly distributed across the seven days a week. So here is the formal hypothesis test for example. I expect you to use a similar format when you're writing up your hypothesis test for chi-squared. So step one is we state the hypotheses. Uh, with chi-square, you can either use words or uh, proportion 1, proportion 2. In this case, we go through proportion 7. Um, so we are going to let P1 be the proportion of births on Sunday, P2 be the proportion of births on Monday, and then you can do dot, dot, dot if you've got a long list, which says and so on, so that P7 is the proportion of births on Saturday. And so with symbols, we could say the null hypothesis is that P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals P4 equals P5 equals P6 equals P7 equals 1 7th, uh, and then that P, sometimes we put a P sub 0 so that we know that corresponds with the null hypothesis. Uh, if you wanted to explain this with words, you could say bursts are evenly distributed across the seven days of the week. Then the alternative hypothesis is, is that at least one P, and we use I as a subset uh, for the index here, the subscript, so at least one PI is not equal to 1 7th. So that would, with words, be interpreted as bursts are not evenly distributed across the seven days of the week. Step two is to enter the data in StatCrunch. We did that above. And then step three is to assess our evidence. So the chi-square value is 3,679.867. Uh, we are conducting the chi-square goodness of fit test with a significance level alpha equals 0.05. By default, we'll use that 0.05 significance level. Uh, and then we will reject the null hypothesis because our p-value was near zero and zero is less than 0.05. So now in step four, we state our conclusion. So there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that bursts are evenly distributed across the seven days of the week. Our chi-square is really large, so we give our chi-square value here as uh, evidence. Our degrees of freedom is six. Our p-value is super small. You could say less than 0 0.0001 or approximately zero. So we conclude that bursts of babies are not evenly distributed across the seven days of the week. Let's take a look at a second example of goodness of fit tests. This is the jurors in Alameda County. This is real data. Uh, one study of grand juries in Alameda County compared the demographic characteristics of jurors with the general population to see if the jury panels were representative. The results for the age are shown below. The investigators wanted to know whether these 66 jurors were selected at random from the population of Alameda County and note that only people age 18 and over are considered for juries, and the county age distribution is known from public health department data. Uh, just to note, this data is from the 70s, so it wouldn't match the current countywide age percentages. So uh, we see here, even though the age groups aren't equal width, we have the associated percentages and the associated number of jurors. So our null hypothesis is going to say that everything is equal between the two groups. So we would say for the null hypothesis, the proportion of jurors is equal to the countywide percentage for each age group. The alternative hypothesis is going to indicate that there's some difference. Everything's not equal. So the way that we can phrase the alternative hypothesis is to say at least one age group proportion of jurors does not match the countywide percentage. So now we want to input our data in StatCrunch and then do a goodness of fit test. The note here says take a minute to consider which is the observed data and which is the expected frequency. So the number of jurors is what we actually got from the population of jurors that they took the random sample from. So that's our data that we've observed. The county-wide age percentages hold true for the whole county, so that's what we would expect to see or see results very close to that if the jurors match the countywide distribution. So let's go into StatCrunch and do some analysis. So in another tab, I have my jurors in Alameda County data. So in the first column, I've put the countywide percentages, and in the second column, I've got the numbers of jurors. Then I'm going to go to Stat, Goodness of Fit again, 
and choose a chi-square test. So my observed data is going to be the number of jurors. And then we don't expect all cells to be equal like we did with the births example. So we have to make sure that we are choosing the countywide percentage for the expected values here. And then we go ahead and hit compute. So what the expected column here is done is taken 66 jurors and multiplied those values by the countywide percentages for each age group. So if the 66 jurors match the countywide percentage of ages distribution, we would expect to get values like in the right column here. Now notice our observed values are pretty far off. We have less of the younger age group jurors and more of the retired age group jurors. So what we observe doesn't match what we would expect to see if there were 66 jurors distributed in the same percent as the countywide percentage. You could double check these values by saying, you know, 66 jurors times 0.42 because the first age group was 42%. For the second age group, you could do 66 jurors times 0.23 and so on. So our chi-square value calculated out to be 61.2. 26556 for the degrees of freedom, which are three degrees of freedom because we had four different age groups here. Four minus one is three degrees of freedom. For the three degrees of freedom, this is unusual. Our p-value is very small. So again, we have another situation where we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So in step three, we record our chi-square value and our p-value. And then in step four, we write our conclusion. We say that we reject the null hypothesis since the p-value is below the alpha equals 0.05 significance level. We conclude at least one age group proportion of jurors does not match the countywide percentage.